Hey, e-commerce marketing podcast listener. I wanted to let you know that we have created a six month guide to marketing your e-commerce store. You can download this guide by visiting getosi.com forward slash guide or by texting get OSI to 33444. This guide will show you how to get more traffic, sales, and conversions for your online store. Get the guide right now by visiting getosi.com forward slash guide or by texting get OSI to 33444. Welcome back, everyone, to the e commerce marketing podcast. I am your host, Arlen Robinson, and today we've got another very special guest. Steve Chu. Uh, Steve runs the popular blog MyWifeQuitHerJob.com, which is where he teaches others how to start their own e-commerce business. Welcome to the podcast, Steve. Happy to be here, Arlen. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, you, you, your domain name has definitely got to be one of the catchiest domain names I've heard in, in quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you start off telling us, you know, just a little bit of background, how you got to this point, why you came up with that name and did your wife really quit her job? Yeah, I'll just keep it short here. Um, basically, my wife and I, when we first became pregnant with her, well, I should say when she became pregnant with our first child, she wanted to stay at home. And where we live in the Silicon Valley, you pretty much need two incomes to get a house in a good school district. And so to replace her lost income, which was 100K at the time, we needed to find, uh, we, we decided to just start a business. Okay. And I remember back when we got married, she knew she was gonna cry and she was looking all over the place for handkerchiefs to dry her tears. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't find any of those in the US and ultimately found this manufacturer in China, ended up buying a couple hundred of those handkerchiefs, okay. used only a handful of them and then sold the rest on eBay and they sold like hotcakes. Okay. And so when it came time for her to wanna to quit, we kind of got back in touch with that manufacturer imported a bunch of handkerchiefs and we started our online store at bumblebeelinens.com that ended up generating six figures in a year wow. replaced her salary and then she ended up quitting and i decided to just write about it and my wife quit her job.com gotcha gotcha that's awesome yeah thanks for for summing that up i was really curious as how you you got to that point <laughs> and how you came up with that name but yeah that's that's a great story as far as you know her taking the Kind of leap of faith and then how it really worked out for you and you're not the only entrepreneur i've spoken to that has come into a business idea based out of necessity you know i've, I've talked to so many business owners and they tell me the same thing you know they were doing something and they needed a product to fulfill their particular need and you know wasn't there it was hard to get and then that's kind of how they got into it so that's that's interesting how you got into the to the anchor chiefs business so that's that's interesting but uh, you know as far as we're going to be talking about today uh, today's focus since your your background is very diverse and i know you can speak about a variety of e-commerce marketing strategies today we want to focus on facebook marketing and facebook advertising we've never really delved too too deep into it and i know a lot of the listeners out there are at various points in their business have either experimented with Facebook or are thinking about experimenting with it. So we want to talk about the today. So for initial, my initial question is, you know, how can an e-commerce business today get started with Facebook advertising if they've never done it before and, you know, are interested in kind of diving right into it? Yeah. And, you know, one of the problems I find with people who try Facebook is they, they start running an ad, they spend some money, it doesn't work, and then they quit. Right. So I would say if you want quick wins, something that almost always works, like I would say 90 percent of the time is to run Facebook dynamic product ads. Hmm. And the way this works is you upload a catalog of your products to Facebook and then you have to instrument your site. But then once someone shops on their on your site and let's say they visit a product, they will be shown an ad dynamically with a picture of that product on Facebook. And because they've already been to your site and they're familiar with your brand and they're being shown a picture of the exact product that we're looking at, this tends to convert really well. Right, right. I was wondering what that was called. I, I've seen that a lot before I, my, on myself. Anytime I visited various sites, even on Amazon, and then I go to to Facebook, yeah, I'm seeing that same exact product that I purchased. And, you know, I, of course, since I'm in the industry, I, I, I know that is, you know, has to do with the, the retargeting and everything like that. But it, it, it kind of catches you because you see that and you're like, hey, I just, you know, I just was searching for that product and there it is. And so it's definitely a great way to, to, to convert. Um, do you feel that those type of ads convert a lot better than just? Oh, yeah, absolutely. 
Um, okay. I can give you an idea. They they convert anywhere between 12 and 16x return on ad spend. Wow. The only problem with those ads is you are kind of limited by the amount of traffic that you have on your site, right? Because okay. you're bringing in repeat customers, or not repeat customers, but people have already been to your site, True. back to your site. Right. So it's it's for those type of customers, not necessarily for the customers that are seeing you for the first time. It's just, you're targeting a specific set of your, your customers. That's correct. Yeah. Oh. And the reason why I recommend people start out with this one is because you get some quick wins, you get some you know profit on your ads, and that gives you the confidence to try some of the other things. Okay. That makes sense. Now, what about other types of businesses? Let's say service type businesses. They're not selling any products, any retail products. Could they utilize that same particular feature, that same type of advertising? Um, So the dynamic product ads are mainly if you have like kind of like a larger catalog. But I would say if you were just running services, just a straight retargeting ad would be good enough. So, So for example, if someone if someone clicked all the way over to like the checkout form for your services or the contact form, I I would say, then you can show them an ad just to kind of remind them that you exist and to come back and complete the purchase or the contact form. It's the same thing. It's just not dynamic, right? If you only, if you're selling services, chances are you only have a handful of services. And for those, you know, you can just write, uh, create individual ads for those. Right, right. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense. I know the retargeting these days are, you know, they're definitely something that can be very, you know, very effective for sure. Um, and I see that all the time these days. Now, Every business these days, no matter what size they're in or what particular time period they're in in their business, are are always concerned about their budget, their marketing budget. And so with e-commerce business getting started, is there typically a minimum ad budget that you recommend starting with if you're going to be using Facebook? I mean, for Facebook, here's my general philosophy on just advertising in general. Like if you're making a profit, there's no reason just to max out your budget. So I guess we want to talk about some minimum guidelines. Whenever I personally run some ads just to test things, and I'm talking about top of funnel here, going to cold customers, I always put at least 10 to $15 per ad set. Okay. And And here's what's complicated about it. So everything kind of, when it comes to Facebook, it kind of all goes together, right? Your top of funnel, when you're going to cold customers, because you are interrupting someone, from browsing on Facebook. Like we we don't go on Facebook to shop, right? We go to check out what's going on with friends and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. So people aren't really necessarily in the mood to shop on Facebook. Right. So as a result, when you're targeting brand new customers who are unfamiliar with your brand, it's generally a lot harder to just send them to a product and have them buy. So the strategy I usually use is I give them some sort of really enticing offer or piece of content just to get them on the site, become familiar with our brand, perhaps getting them on our email list or our messenger list and that sort of thing, and then use retargeting to actually close the sale. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that's that totally makes sense. And I know a lot of businesses these days can can appreciate that, and that's something that you know they can they can think about doing. And every business, of course, has a different advertising budget, has a different amount that they can spend with. But yeah, what I usually always recommend and suggest is. A lot of a budget is going to have to depend on the effectiveness of that particular spend. You know, you, of course, have to spend enough to see some results. And like you said, you got to be getting enough traffic through uh, enough eyes on that to see if it is effective. But then over time, you know, you'll be able to see, is it working? If so, you can definitely put more more money into it. But, you know, you have to start somewhere and then, you know, just really measure the results. Yeah, I mean, if it's working, there's no reason just to put as much money as possible into it, right? Right, exactly, exactly. But getting to this point, I mean, I like to usually just, the the way Facebook ads works is you kind of experiment and things don't work, things don't work, things don't work. And then you find that one thing that works, and that's where you put all your money in. Right, right, exactly. Now, with, with Facebook, of course, you, you mentioned the a great way to start, which is the the retargeting type of ads. For those businesses that may have experimented with that or kind of already in there doing a few things, what would be kind of the next step? What are some other things that you've seen businesses have success with? Yeah, and so so some of the easiest ads to make money with kind of fall under the same vein. So Facebook will automatically show products to people who've actually already purchased from you too. I I call these ads dynamic cross-sell ads. So Mm -hmm. if someone's actually made a purchase on your site, you can then show them products that perhaps other people bought in conjunction with that product in an ad. 
that Facebook automatically populates. Mm -hmm. And once again, that converts super well as well. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. That that sounds great. And I know one of the things that we didn't really mention earlier prior to starting the recording, but it, it, I guess it could be it's relevant now because of everything that's going on with Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg appearing uh, before the uh, Congress and the Senate committee. Are things like that something to be concerned about as far as, you know, the end consumer or the end person on Facebook being concerned about their data? Is this whole thing, do you think, really going to have an effect on businesses and the way business happens on Facebook? Well, I'm curious as to what your opinion is. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think so, because like as a consumer, I'm shopping for these items and I'm clearly interested in these items. So I actually want like whenever I go, whenever I go on Facebook, I actually enjoy seeing these ads because a lot of times it's stuff that I'm actually interested in buying. So from the consumer perspective, like consumer and politics are a lot different in my opinion, right? Mm -hmm. It's one thing to try to influence a vote. It's another thing to be shown products that you might actually want to buy. Right. So that's my opinion. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it, it's two totally different things. Yeah. So for the advertisers, you know, ultimately they're just they're just trying to sell their products and and if they can drill down to as specific as possible demographic of, of somebody interested in it that you know they're going to want to do that and that's that's really the power of facebook being able to to have all that data and then drill down as as far as you need to to reach you know your certain potential customer yeah now, now with Facebook in our business here at OSI Affiliate Software, we, we talk to business owners all the time. And I know a lot of businesses out there don't really have a some don't really have an in-house, let's say, graphics person or, you know, sometimes creating graphics and creatives can be a pain for pain point for many businesses. Sure. What um, in your experience, uh, what types of ads and their creatives are, are typ typically perform well and are, are things that can be easily implemented by a, a small business. Yeah, so I found that video ads, especially for the top of funnel, like when you're when you're uh, targeting someone who's just brand new and unfamiliar with your brand, video ads work the best. Mm -hmm. And you don't really need a video crew to do this. You can just create a nice slideshow with captions that clearly outline your unique value proposition. Those type of videos work well. Okay. You can use services like Animoto or Wave.video to create really short square videos that okay. tend to capture the attention of, of someone brand new. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I, I see a lot of those these these days, and I think one of the trends these days is most videos nowadays, even the videos that you see from some of the major newspapers and news outlets, they all have captions because they know everybody that's looking at Facebook is you know during the day they're probably at their job, you know they're they're flipping over there when they should be doing some work. They're looking at their Facebook feed, and you know when they're scrolling down there, they know by default. It's the volume is going to be muted there. So yeah. in order for that message to get across, you've, you've got to have the captions. So, yeah, that makes sense. There's a lot of tools, like you said, out there, Animoto and some others where you can quickly and easily create a video with captions. And, you know, your video will really fit right in where it's, it won't be unusual that you have a, a video like that that has captions and, you know, has, you know, hopefully some type of call to action where you're either driving your mm -hmm. customer to your website or offering, you know, some type of special promotion. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. You know, with the amount of users that are on Facebook, you know, there's so many different types of demographics and, you know, for all over the world where you could you could target, it can be a little overwhelming. I know, you know, personally dealing with Facebook, how at, at the beginning, how broad or how narrow should target audience actually be and how, what should a business do initially yeah so the way i like to proceed is if i'm starting from complete scratch chances are i have some sort of idea who my target customer is so i'll start out just targeting based on interests like what magazines do they read what websites do they like and just target them with like a video for engagement. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get an idea of who's watching my video more than 75%. And okay. then I, I immediately create like a lookalike audience I of see. these people. And then I run that same ad to the lookalike audience. And instead, this time, I might target for conversions, maybe add to cart conversions. And once I get a significant amount of add to carts, I'll create another lookalike audience and kind of build things up and kind of narrow down the people who actually have purchase intent over time. Oh, okay, I see. That, that makes sense. So you're not just jumping out there with 
selecting just such a broad audience, your 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 initial run is really to get, really gather data and determine that's correct. Yeah, who's really looking at it and and the initial engagement that yeah that that really makes makes total sense. Now with Facebook, we know of course there's a, a lot of power in it. There's so many businesses that are are successful with Facebook ads. I, I hear testimonials you know all the time. One of the things that I'm I'm always concerned about and I ask a lot of my guests is with with social media and with all of these different networks coming and going, you know, should a business be concerned about, you know, putting too much into it or relying too much on Facebook where, you know, let's say I I don't know if this is going to happen, but let's say five, 10 years um, from now, you know, the next big thing comes out and Facebook really, you know, really starts dropping as far as becoming effective. Do you? Do you see it? Should that be a concern for business? Yeah. You know what? I think that if you're spending money on likes to your page or building up a fan page that, you know, Facebook has proven over the years is going to have diminishing returns. All right. They continuously nerf the reach of organic reach, I should say, of your pages and your groups. And so based on their track record, you know, I wouldn't be spending a whole lot of budget just trying to build up a page and that sort of thing. Okay. Ads, however, are something that, you know, those things come and go. Like, let's say Facebook decides to, is it becomes less popular over the years. Well, you, you'll find another platform to put your money in. I just wouldn't spend the money building up any native sort of platforms on Facebook at this point. Perhaps out, so I take that back. I mean, right now, I'm spending a lot of money on Facebook Messenger okay. and gathering Messenger subscribers mm-hmm. because there's so many people on Messenger right now. And I'm building up that list because right now, that marketing platform is still very new. Okay. So the open rates and the click-through rates are fantastic. Now, I'm going to run with Messenger as long as it's good. But as soon as it starts getting diminishing returns, maybe I'll put my money elsewhere. Okay. So it, it's kind of like something that you just you just need to evolve your strategy over time depending on what the environment looks like. Right. That, told, that makes total sense. Now, you mentioned the, the Facebook Messenger. And I know, like you said, it, it's fairly new. How exactly does that work as far as advertising through that and building the subscribers? Is it more of you just uh, sending out like a notification about a promotion or content what what what's typical with it yeah i mean it behaves the same way as a regular facebook ad the only difference is when someone clicks on the ad they are taken to messenger where you have like a facebook messenger bot interact with them i see and you can gather email addresses you can send them to offers and that sort of thing it just starts with messenger as opposed to going directly to your site i see i see so in in essence it it can it's another further way to kind of pull in that customer and have some initial engagement prior to you sending them to your site or giving them an offer. And the messenger, you typically, I guess most companies will create a bot where maybe there's going to be, what is it, a series of questions. Maybe you ask for you know, their email address or get them to subscribe to something. Is that typically how it works? Sure. So the beauty of subscribe, subscribers are as soon as they respond to your messenger bot, mm-hmm. they are instantly a subscriber on messenger. Okay. And after that point, you can send them messages okay. arbitrarily. Okay. Yeah, that's that's great. And you know, I mean, there's a lot of rules about that Facebook has. I mean, we can get in those if you want. But there are certain rules on what you can send someone uh, once they're on your subscriber list. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I, I figured as much just because you know, it's it's a little different because it, it's not like I mean, in a way, they're opting in. You know, they're opting in just like uh, opting into an, an email news list. But it's a little different because you're you're kind of having a direct. You're sending them really almost a direct notification. So it's a little bit different. So I, I can see how those rules would be a little different when dealing with that. Yeah, so that makes sense. But as far as, you know, a business now, just to, to kind of wrap things up, what do you think is one Facebook advertising strategy that a business, an e-commerce business can do today to start seeing, you know, an increase in traffic and sales within 24 hours? Or is that too much to ask? I mean, within 24 hours, you can just start with the dynamic retargeting ads, okay. the cross-sell ads. If you already have a, a bunch of existing customers, chances are a lot of people who have shopped on your store probably haven't shopped in a while. Mm-hmm. And to just kind of drum up business from existing customers who are already familiar with your brand who haven't purchased in a while, you can run ads just to those people as well. Mm-hmm. And if you aren't running any sort of retargeting ads whatsoever, you can just take people who've already visited your site and try to get them back. So that's like the lowest hanging fruit. Okay. Right. Gotcha. 
to target brand new people with traffic, that takes a little bit more time. Mm -hmm. You want to probably put together a really good video that clearly outlines your unique value proposition and do some exploratory missions to see how well that ad performs and then start running it to lookalike audiences for people who have actually purchased. Okay. Gotcha. In conjunction with retargeting ads. Okay. That makes sense. And that actually brings another quick question that I have is I've talked to a lot of other businesses that, you know, they may be targeting, let's say, let's say you have two different types of biz, two different businesses and they're targeting a similar audience. I've seen it where sometimes businesses will kind of collaborate and they'll share each other's audience. Do you see that a lot? And is that ever appropriate or, you know, or do you not see that because you're, you're kind of tapping into your competitors uh, know, market? I haven't seen that as much. I know there's people that actually sell their audiences. Okay. So you can tap into someone's audience. I have not actually experimented with that okay. myself. Okay. Gotcha. I know it happens, but I just don't have a lot of experience with it. Gotcha. No problem. I was just curious about if that was something common. Well, uh, great. Well, this, um, I think, was very worthwhile. Steve, I appreciate you joining us here today on the e-commerce marketing podcast. Now, if any of our listeners are that are out there want to get in touch with you, how do they do it? Yeah, just head on over to mywifequitterjob.com. I actually offer a free six-day mini course on e-commerce. And if any of you guys are getting married, I can hook you up with some handkerchiefs at uh, <laughs> bumblebeelinens.com. Okay, great. That that sounds awesome. Well, thanks again, Steve. Uh, I appreciate it. And uh, you have a great day. And thanks for joining us on the e-commerce marketing podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me, Arlen. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce marketing podcast. To access e-commerce videos and other resources to help your business grow, please visit getosi.com forward slash videos. Subscribe to us on iTunes by searching for e-commerce marketing podcast, and please leave a rating and a review. Thanks for listening. See you next time.